I want us to look at some standing poses after the certain ones, and we're going to go through the same configurations of the lighting and the positioning like we did before. So um, I'm going to have Tia pose in some very unusual, unconventional ways so that we can bring out her physique so much more as we, you know, shoot it with one light. Even though you see this light, I'm going to introduce it um, after shooting with just one light like we did. Okay, so there's just a strip box with um, a speed light installed behind it. So it's going to be our second light when we turn it on. So let us begin. So looking at the position of the light, I have taken out the grid so that we can have much more outpour and uh, a little bit of light touching the background. This time I'm going to need it because uh, I want to illuminate hair much more. Because if I had the grid in front of it, I would have cast a lot of nasty shadows. And I cannot have my reflector in the shot and still not have it appear in the frame. You get what I mean? So I'm going to do that without the grid this time. And let's see some poses that we can do with our model over here. Okay, so um, Tia, I want you to have the bag in your right hand like you have. Okay, cool. Then I want you to heave your hips out like so, right? Much more like what you did. Okay, cool, like so. But can you cross your legs some more so that we can, yes, get your physique come out some more, just like that, like an hourglass. <laughs> okay, cool. So I want you to turn your face this way, cool. Let me get a couple of some shots. All right, so three, two, one, good. All right, can you back up a little bit? Go back a little bit, a little bit more, so much more. Okay, good, <laughs> okay, now maintain that pose, good. Three, two, one, good. Three, two, one, good. Lower your head. Good. Three, two, one. Good. All right. So we have interesting looks over here because I made her exaggerate her pose. You're tired, right? <laughs> these poses are not easy to perform, but I think I'm actually in love with these pictures. So I'm sure you also love them too, right? Yes, 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 yes. So um, what I'm going to do is to make the scene look much more interesting in the pictures as well. So I'm going to turn on my strip box that's going to serve as my second light as well as a rim light. Let's see how interesting the look is going to turn. All right, so the speed light in the strip box is turned on. That means you're going to introduce yet a second light to the shot. So because there's going to be light sending itself in this direction, I'm going to have to have something to catch the light, all right? So I'm going to have my model, instead of having the bag in the right hand like we did before, this time in the left, so that when the light touches the bag, it will reflect and it will give it much more dimension. So let's see Tia do some interesting poses that way. So I think, yeah, hold your waist that way, cool. And continue to maintain the hourglass shape by crossing your legs that way, cool. And uh, I want you to look in this direction, but hold this up like that, cool, like so, and lean backwards. Good. Let me get your necklaces, <laughs> the necklace in the right position, like so, good. So three, two, one, ready, good. Lower your head a little bit, good. Give me more dramatic looks. Sassiness, three, two, one, good. So just like you can tell in these pictures, you can notice that the catch light is actually carving out the bag in the hand of my model. So that's uh, something that you can keep in mind because um, when you don't have anything necessarily, but just the model in the shot, probably the catch light wouldn't really take her out. But if you have a prop in the hand like we do in our case, it can serve as a catch light for the rim lighting. All right, so this is the last setup you're going to work on, which involves three lights. So maintaining my AD600 through the soft box, the Ambitful soft box, then my strip box still with my speed light, and with my third light, which is the interesting light in the scene at the moment, a continuous light, my SL60W Godox, and I'm gonna bounce it right against the background so that it creates this halo effect. And when my subject stands right in front of the light, she blocks the light source, but you rather see the light, okay? So the bleed of the light that comes out from her 
creates a very nice and um, an interesting effect. So that's what we're going to go with. And uh, yeah, let's start shooting. I'm going to bring the bag so that the light actually touches it. Okay. Um, all right. So turn your face away some more and lower your head. But I want you to lean backwards. Good. Cool. So that brings your shoulders up like so. Three, two, one. Close your eyes and look down. And turn your face to your right. Turn your face to your right. Lower your head. Good. Three, two, one. All right. Three, two, one. All right. Chin up a little bit. Three, two, one. Good. Three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one. Hold it. Turn your face to your right. Three. Two, one. Gorgeous. These are many more are the ways that you can, you know, configure a light from one light setup to two, then to three. You can even go as far as six, seven or more, depending on how you're going to creatively use it. But basically, if you're starting out with light and photography, then you stay with the basics, master it. And yeah, I think the further you should go, can be three so you can creatively make sure that you've grasped everything then you can move on to the subsequent more advanced ones so yeah tia how did you find the shoot it was wonderful and tiring right <laughs> she's totally tired but yeah i mean the poses that she had to do were kind of unconventional but she pulled them off wonderfully so yeah this has been copy shots and i'm going to catch you next time in the next video don't forget to subscribe see ya